Welcome back everybody. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today we're going to be having some fun with a Texan in 257. So this is a small bore Texan. So unlike uh, the 45 Texans that a lot of people uh, know from Air Force, uh, this is a small bore 257. Um, really, really cool gun. Highly, highly accurate. Uh, lots of good accuracy potential. We're going to discuss that in a minute. Uh, we're going to start out by shooting. We got a little gallery here up close, and uh, we're going to have a little bit of fun and take out some small items and some big items. And uh, we got some uh, Nielsen Specialty Ammo Hollow Point uh, projectiles here that are swaged projectiles, very, very high quality. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more as we go. Let's have some fun with it. Now, this one is not uh, moderated, so it's a, it's got a little bit of noise to it, uh, but they will be able to make this in a moderated one at some point, which would be cool. All right, let's have a little fun. All right, that was a Kiwi. <laughs> and that, uh, <laughs> that hollow point made a, made a nice uh, mess of that. All right, how about a soda? On the end right there. Oh, yeah. Put a nice, <laughs> nice little little mark on that. All right, a key lime. A little low, I'll tell you what. One more time. That was slightly low. I have to aim kind of high because we're, uh, we're very close here. Just seeing what the little guy can do. Not bad. Those limes don't come apart quite like the kiwis do. We got one kiwi there. Let's hit him. All right, I've got a grape over there sitting next to the soda. Let's see if we can hit a grape. That one's going to be a tough shot. Got him. That was a nice solid hit. All right, and then one more soda. We're just having some fun here. All right. All right, we're going to take some shots out to 50 yards. Look, one thing that I can say about the 257 Texan, this particular air rifle is highly, highly accurate. And I'm going to, I'm going to pretty much attribute that in part to the fact that we're running some really, really consistent uh, projectiles through this particular one. Like I mentioned, the Nielsen Specialty Ammo uh, projectiles that we're using are um, swaged instead of cast. So you get really uniform uh, shape of the bullet as well as uniform weights. And that's something that's really important when it comes to air gunning, especially um, weight sorting and everything like that comes into play, especially when you're casting your own projectiles. Casting is only going to give you so much precision, but when you're running something like that, using a swage bullet gives you a lot of accuracy. So let, let's talk about accuracy. I'm going to share some data points with you here on the 257. Guys, we've done many, many videos on the Texans before. We've shot uh, the SS version of the Texan. Uh, we've done videos on the normal Texan. Uh, there's also a Texan carbine out there that we'll be doing a video on at some point. Uh, guys, we've shot things like the Condor SS and, uh, and all the different guns that, that Air Force makes. We've dealt with them all in some degree. Um, the cool thing about the 257 Texan and where it really differs from the Condor is that the Condor is really intended to shoot uh, you know, skirted uh, traditional air gun pellets. And remember in that video, we did some weight sorting and we were able to really get some nice accuracy out of the 25 caliber Condor SS, which really for a small bore gun, it still possesses a good bit of power, even to kill coyotes and foxes and things like that, you know, small game. Uh, even the Condor is capable of taking down a game of that type. With the Texan in 257, you actually get to, to bump it up to an actual 257 projectile instead of, well, I mean, the skirted projectile is still a projectile, but you're talking more of a traditional bullet, a solid, instead of a, a skirted projectile. And that gives you a bit of uh, flexibility in terms of the weights that you can use. And it gives you a little bit better downrange performance and a little bit more energy, uh, as well as exceptional accuracy as well. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the Spitzer bullets. So we, we only had two different varieties of projectiles to test. We did an 85 grain Spitzer, uh, which is a 
you know, it's, it's, it's a Spitzer style projectile with a flat base. Um, the hollow points are actually a boat tail that sways, which is really cool. And I think that attributes to that really good accuracy at long range, you'll see in a minute. Uh, but with the 85 grain Spitzer, uh, off a of 3,000 uh, PSI fill, which is what we're dealing with here. Now, obviously, we're shooting off the bottle here, and that's just to, so we don't have to keep stopping and, and refilling. But uh, five shots, your first three shots, um, let's see, our average group size was about an inch uh, at 50 yards, which is really good, but we did, we did cut a couple of half-inch groups uh, with those. For a five-shot group, our average group size was uh, roughly about an inch and a half. Okay, so really good consistency for five shots. Uh, this is about a 180 to 200 uh, foot-pounds of energy gun. This one has been tuned down just a little bit because we're really trying to get that accuracy, uh, but it can be bumped up to around a 200 foot-pound uh, foot pound gun, which is plenty of power to take down coyotes, uh, bobcats, foxes, maybe even hogs with really good shot placement. Uh, I don't know if I would be quite that adventurous. I wouldn't really consider this like a big game uh, air rifle. It's more of uh, an air rifle that's for somebody that wants to get into kind of long range plinking, long range hunting uh, on small varmints, uh, small game. Obviously, you're talking groundhogs and things like that. You're right there where you need to be in terms of power factor and being able to provide a, uh, you know, a humane kill on a small animal. Obviously, good shot placement on coyotes, foxes. You're going to be pretty much right there in the ballpark you need to be in. Uh, with this particular gun. 200 foot pound gun with an 85 grain bullet. So getting into the hollow points is where this thing really, really shined in terms of our data that we collected. Um, and again, these were the Nielsen Specialty Ammo Projectiles, the one I'm holding right here with the little hollow point. Uh, I'm not sure, I know the hollow point really does help with flight stability and gives it a lot of good accuracy in the boat tail. Anytime you got a boat tail hollow point, especially, you know, you look at center fire rifle projectiles, obviously, uh, they're chosen for their excellent ballistic coefficient as well as really good accuracy. But I would imagine that that hollow point, that cavity, is definitely going to do a little bit of a number on small critters or small objects like you saw earlier. But average group size was just over a half inch uh, from three to five shot strings uh, with, that with this particular gun and this projectile. Again, 3,000 PSI fill and that's for the first five shots. Uh, again, so around 980 to 918 uh, feet per second, that's about the shift that you're getting from like one from one to five shots, which is definitely not bad. Again, 181 foot-pounds of energy, definitely acceptable. So that was the only two projectiles that we were able to test uh, in this particular you know, gun uh, this time, but uh, it really is an awesome air rifle and it's highly, highly accurate. In fact, I think at some point we might wind up taking this thing out to some longer range um, I'm going to fire a couple of shots here at 50 yards. Uh, earlier, I was just confirming zero on our optic. Uh, this is a 4.5 to 27 by 56 Vortex HD, so it's, it's kind of a silly optic, but we were going to you know, maybe take some longer range shots today, so we thought that maybe it'd be fun to have a nice high power optic on this particular gun. Uh, the bases that are here on this particular uh, air gun or a Picatinny rail adapter that adapts the 3 8 uh, inch dovetail top over to a pick rail, and that's a product that Air Force also makes in conjunction with their guns. So um, we were getting some really good accuracy. I mean, earlier I was shooting some 50 yard groups, uh, just kind of confirming the gun, and with the hollow points again, I was getting about a three quarter inch group, and that was really my first time behind the gun. And then at 100, I had one flyer down there but I was able at 100 to post about a three quarter inch group at 100 yards, which to me is excellent. For a hunting situation, you're talking really precise shots that allow you to really land that shot exactly where you want. Uh, about a five or six inch drop with the 50 yard zero out to 100. So about six inches of drop between 50 to 100. Um, so you know, the, the bullet doesn't exactly fall out of the air, but as you get into some, some sillier ranges, you are gonna have to compensate, obviously, for the drop of the projectile. So um, let's shoot a few things at 50 yards, have a little bit of fun, uh, see how well the hollow point performs at 50, and then we'll step out to 100. Let's do it. All right, guys, I'm gonna be a little honest here. I almost feel like this is kind of cheating, shooting these sodas at 50 yards, because earlier we were getting such good groups. Uh, but we're gonna, we're gonna take out some choice targets here. Just have a little fun with the 257 Texan. All right, fun stuff. Mm. 
Makes those sodas come apart real nice. One thing I do notice when I compare the 45 Texan to the 257 is the actual loading gate in terms of setting the, the projectile in the barrel extension and pushing it in. It is a much smaller area, so you do have to kind of fidget a little bit more. If you've got big fingers, it can be a little bit tough. That's just one observation there. But uh, the trigger, safety, the way the, uh, the gun loads and operates is pretty much exactly the same as the Texan, which is cool. All right, another soda. That trigger breaks nice and clean. Yeah, it's not that big of a deal, but it, it is kind of tiny. You know, you are talking a smaller projectile, so, you know, making sure that your, uh, your motor skills are up to the task of uh, handling small projectiles. In a hunting situation, if you're in a hurry, I could see maybe kind of fumbling over those tiny bullets. Just something to consider. All right. That projectile's fast, too. It just, it just gets there very quick. And we're shooting off the bottle right now. We're showing about 2,500 PSI, which is a little lower than we probably want to be. But because we're on the bottle, it's nice and consistent. Definitely not an issue. So I am kind of cheating here, you know, shooting off the bottle. But that's just to, for your entertainment. All right. Smoked it. We're going to take out the rest of our sodas, and then we're going to hit the steel a few times, and then we'll pop out to 100 yards here. You guys can see the, you can see the point here that we're making. I mean, this thing's accurate. It's got nice power. Cool air rifle. Oh, that one uh, must have sprung a leak because it was empty. All right. I'm going to hit a few of these poppers here. Let's just see if we can shoot some, some form of a little group. I'm going to find a little spot here to kind of center in on, and let's just see if we can stack a few in there. All right, that hit kind of low. That's fine. That was like maybe an inch low where I was aiming. I'm just going to stick to that same point of aim and just see what they do. Very consistent projectiles. Hopefully I can deliver the goods here, guys. Kind of cheating shooting off the bottle, but it <laughs> helps, uh, helps us along here. That was probably my fault but very acceptable. I mean, for hunting purposes, if you're needing to put precise shots on a small animal, uh, it'll definitely do it. All right, I know the camera, it, you can't probably can't see in the camera down there. I'm gonna pop that gopher in the face a couple of times just for fun. Oh yeah. All right, get back up to my bowling pin there. One more shot. Oh yeah. All right, uh, we're gonna take some shots out to 100. I mean, 50 yard accuracy is excellent with this 257 and really 45 Texan, nine mil Texan, doesn't matter what the bore size is. It, I think it's really more of the design of this particular air gun, the way the toggle system's designed, the way it works, uh, the type of valve that's in it. It's just, it's got a, a, a very nice kind of marriage of different components that really lend itself to wonderful accuracy. I mean, these guns use Lothar Walther barrels, so really, really high quality barrels uh, that are, of course, very accurate. Um, so yeah, let's punch out to 100. Um, I shot a good group earlier. Uh, let's see if I can replicate that uh, accuracy again. Let's do it. All right, guys, we're going to take some 100-yard shots here with the 257 uh, Texan. Uh, earlier, I was using some of that weird redneck math where I guess things look smaller than they really are or whatever. Uh, I said it was about a three-quarter inch group. Uh, we measured it. actually ended up being about an inch and a half group without the flyer. 
I just want to make that clear, uh, you know, from when I had shot it earlier. We're going to shoot again just to see if I can somewhat replicate that. Uh, these projectiles are going to be dropping in about uh, six or so inches. Um, we're just going to take some shots, have a little fun, and then we're going to go over to the farm and we're going to take some shots out to about two or three hundred yards. I don't know if that's possible, but we're going to try. Um, this particular gun has only been fired at 100 yards by pretty much anybody, so we'll be the first people to take this out to some longer range. So we'll have a little fun with that and just see, you know, if the 257 will bunk the wind and get in there and do some fun stuff at long range. So let's do it. So make sure you stay tuned for that part of the video. We will be uh, shooting it out to some longer range here. You know, of course, we got this optic where it looks like I'm sitting right next to it, you know. Because, you know, you need a 27 power optic to shoot 100 yards. It does make it easier, though. Let's see. All right. I think this optic probably costs more than, <laughs> than the gun does, but that's okay. I won't tell anybody if y'all won't. This is kind of one of our swing optics that we just throw on random stuff. So we thought we would uh, drop it on here and have some fun with it. All right, stay right there. Let's see what we got. Actually dropped a little bit more than uh, six inches. That's probably more like an eight inch drop, but uh, not bad. All right, that one went just a little low and skimmed the bottom of the plate is what it looked like there. So. Those two shots were probably about two inches from each other. I don't know what happened there, but if that's the case, it means that that projectile dropped uh, about 10 inches. So I don't know if maybe our, our bottle is getting a little bit low. We're on about 2,500 PSI. So for whatever that's worth, let's see what it does. And if it drops again, I may have to cheat a little higher. Yep, same thing. So now the projectiles are dropping 10 inches instead of earlier when we were at slightly higher power. I think earlier at about 28, 50 uh, PSI. Now we're at 2,500 PSI and we're getting a couple of extra inches of drop. So that's just something to consider. Uh, I think the accuracy is still going to be there. Let me cheat a little bit higher. Find a little spot on the back of the berm there. And let's see if we can lob a few in and maybe shoot some resemblance of a group here. Uh, we're just going to go for it. Kind of winging it, guys. All right, right in the center. So let's see if maybe we can get five or six shots into some bit of a group here. At a little slower velocity than what we shot earlier, but that's okay. And we do have some wind blowing. I have a feeling that getting this thing out to a couple of hundred to three hundred yards is going to be uh, is going to be an act of science for sure. Let's see. I think what we're dealing with with this lower power is also the fact that we've got this gun tuned down a bit at, from the get-go, and then the fact that it's tuned down and the bottle's starting to get low, I think that's really affecting our 100-yard uh, our accuracy. I have a feeling that we're gonna be able to remedy that. The group that we showed you earlier was when the bottle was a little bit closer to being full, and I, I think that's what we're experiencing here, because we are getting some slightly erratic accuracy. Uh, don't get me wrong, it's still good accuracy for hunting, but, uh, it's not indicative of what we were getting earlier, though. It's not bad. Those last two shots are an inch apart. That's closer to what we want to see. Gentle recoil. This thing has no recoil. It's one nice thing about it. It is a little lighter than a standard Texan, which is nice. You know, the skinnier barrel, barrel you are getting a slightly... Uh, Tinier barrel. Let's see. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. So again, I, those last three shots from the looks of it, 
about an inch and a half is, uh, you know, from the first time to this one. Once I settled in, I think that's about what we're looking at. I'm going to throw one more in there. And uh, I think you guys get the point. I'm not going to bore you to tears here. Yep, right in there. One more. I think this uh, bottle's kind of settling in. Actually, the bottle is losing a bit, so now we're at about, about 2,400 PSI. So it's starting to even out the pressure between the, the onboard tank and the tank we're, we're running off of. And uh, we are beginning to see some drop that would be very similar to the drop you would have if you were just using the onboard tank. So I don't know if we're really going to get the result we want. One more shot. Yep. All right. Definitely not bad. Uh, we're going to top off this bottle and we're going to run over to the farm and take some long range shots. I don't have very many of these projectiles left, but we're going to have some fun and do some long range shooting just uh, as an experiment. Uh, guys, the 257 is a really cool gun. Uh, I kind of went into this. To be honest with you, I wasn't really overly sure if I was going to like this uh, particular gun or not. I have to say I probably still prefer the 45 caliber Texan. Uh, whether it's in the SS configuration or in the full size, you know, standard configuration, uh, there's you can't really deny like the big bore energy of a 45 slug going down range. But for people that want to shoot tiny groups and work on accuracy, and they're really kind of chasing that accuracy, I think the 257 is definitely a winner for that type of person or somebody that really wants to uh, hunt small game and they want a slightly lighter rifle. Uh, you know, maybe they don't want to run the Condor SS. Uh, because they, they don't want to run a skirted bullet or they're worried about a light skirted projectile, um, you know, not really doing the job. Uh, this is kind of meant to be, I would, I would assume, a stopgap between the big bore of the 45 and the small bore of the Condor. So uh, it's cool. I dig it. It's accurate. Uh, you know, it's, it's a Texan at heart, so it's really good quality. Seems to be put together real well. Uh, we're going to go ahead and top off the tank. Let's get over to the farm and take some long range shots. All right, guys, we're going to take some long shots. We're out here at the farm. We're going to try to shoot from two to 300 yards at some various targets. And uh, let's have a little fun with the 257 Texan. Same hollow point bullets we've been sticking with. It's been doing really well for us. Uh, we've pretty much already figured out where our holds are. So uh, got 35 minutes to come up <laughs> to get uh, 200 yards. You ready? All right, we got we to gotta hit on the target there. Let me, uh, let me see if I can just lob a few in. We've actually got really nice conditions right now. The wind is not blowing too hard. We should be able to maybe get a few in there. All right, well, that one hit off to the right a bit. We are shooting off the bottle. And we're showing about 2750 on our PSI. So hopefully uh, we'll stay there. Not bad. You know, and, and this isn't exactly practical, but it's just fun to do. You know, to see the, the gun going out to some longer ranges. Uh, nobody's really shot this gun out to this range yet, so we're just kind of playing around now. We do have a strong crosswind blowing now. I'm going to give a full value wind hold and just lob one in. Yep, that wind blew it right into the target. Uh, one more and then we're going to punch out to 300 just for fun. Uh, the group is sort of all over the place, but yeah, they're probably all in about the size of a pie plate from the looks of it. I'm going to give it the same hold. Yep. All right, now we're going to go out to 300 yards and, uh, and lob this 85 grain pill out to 300 yards out of air rifle here. I mean, this is just nuts. All right. This is going to be interesting.
in there. <laughs> I don't have very many projectiles left, but I, I'm almost inclined, guys, to, to maybe in a future video, we'll try this thing out to even further range. But uh, not bad. All right, one more shot, 300 yards. Right over the top of the gun. Right in there, though. I hope you guys are having fun with this video. I mean, we, we always enjoy shooting these types of air rifles, and it's a lot of fun. We're trying to kind of show what the gun's capable of, and, you know, this is kind of an extreme, I suppose, but it's still neat. In there. Not bad. All right. <clears throat> Actually, that was nice and centered. I got me a nice, consistent point of aim. Let's hope that the wind doesn't play around too hard with us here. And uh, let's see if we can group a few down there. Now that we got them hitting about where we want. I'm using a patch of grass on the back of the berm as a uh, aiming point. So let's see. Nice. Okay. <laughs> this is just a hoot. A lot of fun. Not loud at all either, which is kind of nice. All right, that opened up a little bit, but I've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I got five shots and probably about an eight or 10 inch circle there on that gong. And uh, that's not bad, 300 yards. Uh, I know that the bullet doesn't really sound like it's hitting with a ton of authority by the time it gets there, but it, it's still neat to, to know, you know, that it can go that far. All right, one more shot. right over the top of the gong. Um, that bullet is dropping in pretty severe. I've got a bunch of branches and limbs in the way. I don't think I can take a shot at the, uh, at the coyote over there, but I'll tell you what, we do have an eight inch popper. I think I know pretty much where this bullet's going. Let's see. <clears throat> I'm gonna try to lob one in at the eight inch popper right there. See if we can get one to go in. Oh, right over the top. All right, one more try. I think you guys get the point here. Really, really cool. I am using a pretty abstract uh, point on the back of the berm to aim at, so I'm surprised it's doing as well as it is. All right, we got this. Just right over the top of the gong again. Not too bad at all. We wanted to take this gun out to some longer ranges just to show what the capabilities really are. Uh, 200 yards is definitely a stretch for this rifle. 300 yards is a stretch. Once a bullet leaves the barrel, it doesn't matter if it's a firearm, if it's, a, if it's an air gun or whatever it is, that bullet is on a perpetual journey to the ground and you can always figure out where they're going. Uh, and this is, I think, important too to show that air guns, especially uh, that are this powerful, you gotta be careful with them. Always know what's beyond your target. Always know that that bullet's got considerable energy to go a pretty long way and you wanna make sure that you always, you know, shooting somewhere where you know what's behind the target. I mean, that's just basic rules. And it's also neat from an academic uh, point just to see uh, those rounds lob in at long range. So uh, guys, Thank you for watching today's video. We really appreciate all of you. Uh, thanks for all the folks that comment and subscribe and like our videos. Uh, you guys are the lifeblood of this channel, and uh, we really appreciate you watching today. Uh, you have yourselves a good day, and we'll see you next time.